Get the ultimate experience in cleanliness and comfort without breaking the bank when you transform your bathroom with Niagara. From toilets to bidets, Niagara has the perfect solution for any bathroom project. Niagara's award-winning products not only outperform the competitors, they also outdesign them. Thanks to innovations like stealth technology, Niagara's environmentally friendly products can use only half as much water as their competitors, conserving water and saving you money. And there's more great news for homeowners. You can now shop for Niagara products on Amazon or HomeDepot.com. Thank you, Niagara. It is another week of talking sports with the great Nate Newton. I'm John Radigan. We got lots to talk about. Niagara Plumbing brings us this show that's called What, Nate? Let me tell you something, Let man. And we got a something. lot to talk yeah. about, my brother. Yes, sir. Starting with, uh, what, a week ago, uh, four or five days ago. I mean, I know you were at the parade, so we're going to start with the Rangers and then we'll follow up with the Cowboys. Yeah, it, it was amazing. We had a chance to talk about the World Series victory uh, when we were on last week, but now we get to talk about that celebration, which was so different having been you know, walking next to the cars in the Dallas one the first time you guys won in downtown Dallas, man, for the Cowboys. That was unbelievable. Mm. This one, man, everybody's kind of learned their lesson. You've got to... You've got to have better crowd control. You, you know, there were folks jumping over the barriers and coming up and shaking your hand and, you know, hugging on Emmett and all that back then. Um, the, the crowd, as big as it was, was, you know, was well cordoned off. And it was it was really unbelievable to see 700,000 people there celebrating the Rangers, man. I mean, when they first said 100,000, I thought, wow, that's a lot. That's good. Then they said, oh, oh, well, it looks like it's going to be 250. And then we had all these high cameras did, all up in, in risers and up on top of Choctaw, all the way around the 1.9 mile course. We're looking at it going like 400, 500,000. And then I looked at it again. I said, I think we're sneaking up on a million. Right. And lo and behold, you know, they were 700,000, Nate. And it was cool, man. There really weren't that many incidents right there, there were a few arrests and stuff like that but uh there weren't that many incidents there was no real ugliness you know what i love there was no ugliness that sort of made national news <laughs> often on these <laughs> i'm from detroit i'm from detroit nate you know I, we, we celebrate uh championships by burning cars I, I don't know why we do that but you see what i'm saying so i i i appreciate that this was just a, a fairly uh, celebratory day. And, and it, you know, at one point, I don't know how many were in the courtyard there by the stage, but like in unison, they broke into a verse of uh, that Creed song that was kind of their yeah, anthem, right. uh, Can You Take Me Higher, right? right? And the whole audience is singing that song. It was really, really cool. Uh, man, so where were you located at? Where were you, what was your position at the parade? Our set was uh, right there, kind of, um, you know, so the front door to the stadium by the Nolan Ryan right. statue is where the stage was. Right. And our set was down at the end, right on the corner, right across from uh, the home plate entrance at Choctaw. Wow. So we were all, you know, right on that, that main alleyway that people walk up into. Yeah. We were at one end and the stage was at the other end. Wow. Yeah. So you had to, was that premium? Or was that a premium position y'all was at uh uh what you know it's funny we we got lucky because uh we decided this year on opening day that we would try to bring a little bit more of the atmosphere outside to the to the opening day coverage because right. we do about a two-hour show on opening day so we put a drop and all this stuff out there on opening day and that was just for that day wow. right and next thing you know that was the perfect spot to be uh, for the parade. You know, what's really interesting. And I'm going to give credit uh, to my bosses at Valley for this. Um, rightly, the Rangers were not talking about a parade until they won. We remember back in 2006, after the Mavs got up on the heat 
uh, there was somebody, uh, maybe Laura Miller, the mayor then, or somebody in D- Dallas City Council. They were like they published a parade route in the paper, and everybody got on her because you know you jinxed them, you jinxed them, you planned a parade route we hadn't even won yet, right? right. Man, I'm telling you, even even to us, even to the ballot, like we needed to know for logistics. Hey, so what's the plan for the parade? Crickets, man. Do, 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 they would not tell us anything because, and I get it. You do not want to jinx that. You know, you say, oh, here's the route for the parade, and then you lose game six and seven. Now, how do you feel? So, uh, yeah, it was a really <laughs> unbelievable undertaking to turn that thing around from 7 a.m. on Thursday morning last week, the day after they won, and we were on the air at, I think, 11 yeah. on Friday morning. Yeah. So. A little more than 24 hours to put that thing together. It was a lot. We, we had people at our job that went, you know, uh, uh, Kurt Daniels went, uh, Kyle Yeomans oh, yeah. went. We had a few guys that have been Rangers fans since they was kids or either worked for the Rangers at one point. And I, I was happy yeah, for Kurt them. Did. You know, I was um, excited for them, man. I, I, you know. Even uh, I'm, I'm not a parady person or nothing like that. I mean, uh, I, I am so excited for the fans and what the Rangers have accomplished. Is there anything you want to do or say to close out this uh, this Ranger extravaganza that, that that's been floating around? Uh, because you know, it's it's we got to get in. We got to eventually leak over into the Mavs, and in your case, we're gonna leak over a little bit into the Thunder. So, you know, it is always those yeah. Cowboys. Winning, losing, winning, oh, yeah. losing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like they do. Uh, so here's what I say. Here's what I say. Because now the off season begins. The general manager it's meetings are taking place right now. It's free agency. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> here's my thing. Go get Otani. Right. The guy's going to win the MVP, right? The other two candidates for MVP this year, mm-hmm. Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon, you sign Otani next year. You got a shot to have all three candidates for MVP wow. on your team. Wow. That's how good that team would be. Um, Otani's going to have surgery. Um, you know, she so will not be able to pitch next year. But he's proven that th- Tommy John surgery does not affect his ability to hit. Right. So he could be your DH right next year, and then in twenty five he could come back at some point, and he could be uh, you know a, a lockdown pitcher again. So. Um, I, I, you know, again, Nate, I tell you this all the time. It's not my money, right? right? Thank so you. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It might be fifty million a year. It may not get that high because of the injury. Right. I know this. There were some owners' meetings in the middle of the season, and a bunch of the owners got together, and they were just talking after uh, a, one of the meetings. They were having dinner, right. like eight or ten of them, and and they were going. So, what's it going to take to sign Otani? And everybody pretty much agreed 10 years for 50 million a year, $500 million contract, right? right? For signing. And then, and one of the guys, the Dodgers guy said, I've already got some, um, I've already got some Japanese investors and uh, advertisers who will give me 20 million per year. So in advertising for whatever, you know, to have Otani. So I'm thinking I'll go 60. So, you know, there's still a chance. This is just private talk between owners, right? right? So there's still a chance that the Dodgers just blow everybody away. I thought it was awfully cool, though, that among the teams Otani listed as those he would like to go to, the Rangers were one, as were the Dodgers. But the Rangers were one of them. Says everything, man. This is a destination where people want to come now. Uh-uh. And here's one other thing. That reminds me. A lot of people were against the building of another new stadium after the old one was only 25 years old. They don't win this championship. They don't have these players without that. Money's great, you know, for all all, all the players, obviously. But they're going to get it somewhere. And especially these pitchers. They would not have wanted to come to Texas and pitch in that other ballpark in the heat. But because there's a roof on Globe Life Field, that's how they got these free agents. And that's why it's such an attractive destination for free agents now. So sorry about you. And again, it, the vote won by a landslide when they voted for this stadium. But there was a loud uh, vocal minority of people who did not like it. And man, sorry about you. How do you like that World Series parade being in town and that championship coming home? That was pretty cool. You, you know, uh, I tell people, you know, I used to hear 
a few guys, you know, uh, when we was all at 105. And uh, I can't think of the, the guy's name, but he was always about why do teams of any sport play outside when you can make everything environmental friendly? You know, no, no rain, no blizzards, no hot. And uh, at first I was like, nah, sometimes not. But you know what? Kids want comfort. And as these kids grow older, yeah. they're more smarter. Yeah. They can be like, why would I want to go to Buffalo when I can go, I can go to Dallas? Why would I want to go over here when I can go to SoFi? When everything is just so comfortable, so right. If you're if you're a mid range quarterback, you don't want to play in Buffalo. You got to have a big Jim Kelly rocket arm, this guy Josh Allen. You got to have those type of arms because when the wind get the whipping and everything get cold, you need the big six foot five Herbert guy. You know what I'm saying? Who's sitting around and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but you you can't have a Doug Flutie running around out there in that cold weather, man. He his <laughs> arm ain't strong enough. But you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I, I do, and you know, ba- basically those stadiums were all built certainly when you couldn't put a roof on right. them or the idea of them. And the other thing was. Back in those days, man, you just handed it off to a big bruising fullback, yeah. and he rode, ran for four yards, yes. and you did that again. They didn't, you know, they didn't pass in those That's days. That's right. So you're right. When you're talking about throwing for three, four, five hundred yards a game, y- yeah, you, you, want you, the you don't like that ball. Man. You, you need, yeah, the man, you want that ball to float. Yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, man, Kick, kickers too. Yeah. So kickers too, man. Kick, got- Otani oh, is is that is that your, that's your dream. Guy, but who who else is yeah, out there? I, who is I, they need to resign or what? What does the Rangers? Yeah, they got to. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a good question. So they got to resign Jordan Montgomery, right? And he's going to command a lot based on basically the last two months and 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 postseason of this last year. He's going to get a ton more than he would have in his free if he just stayed in St. Louis and you know finished the season you know six and twelve or whatever. He he'd have done fine. He's going to cash in after what he did for the final two months with the Rangers and what he did in the postseason. And I believe the Rangers will, will, you know, pull out all the stops to sign Jordan Montgomery. I think they love Martin Perez enough that they will sign Martin as well. Uh, he's a guy who came up through this organization, and I think they'll sign him to a one- or two-year deal. It'll be much lesser, but they'll, they'll do that to have depth in that starting pitcher role. And then uh, uh, I think that what they need to do is go get a closer. Now, there's lots of talk about them being interested in Josh Hader, mm. and that's a controversial one because Hader is he's the best closer, uh, certainly on the free agent market and one of the best in the game right now. But when his team was out of it this year, he kind of quit on him. He's kind of like, I mean, he, and said it publicly, you know, and uh, <laughs> so it's that's tough. I mean, that's tough. Now, this is such a good clubhouse, Nate, that I think those guys, first of all, I think you're just inspired by those guys, do right? It. And then, but also, don't do I it. think there's somebody who, you don't want to do it. See, you don't want to do it. This is what made, and, and, and maybe Coach Boche or Manager Boche is the man, but I, that's what made Jimmy so unique. If you show those traits like that, and, and even though you're vocal about it, he was going to have something in the contract. You know, if you pull that stunt, we got to be able to do something to you. You don't want, you know, you if it's one thing when the club pull you and say, hey, man, we're going we gonna to do this. We're going we gonna to save you. But you as a player, and this is what low management has done to basketball. This is what not practicing has done to football. This is what baseball is starting to catch on to is I need 50 million a year, but I don't want to play every game. I don't want to pitch every right. five, fifth or six day. Uh, man, I'm a little sore today. I'm not injured. I'm just a little sore today. So I'm going to rest. I'm not going to do the back to back. I'm, 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 I'm not a fan of a whole lot of sports. But nothing bothers me more than when I when I'm watching my teams and they say this dude is taking a rest day, especially the dude is under 31 years old. You're under 31 years old. You've not had any injuries to 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 keep you out of this, 
and and you're cheating the fans. So I, I'm not I'm not about that. If, if hater, okay. I, I love hater. If they want him, and they, you know, because as Coach Parcells says, if you get enough guys like that, eventually your locker room won't be that anymore. We can absorb one of those guys, but not two of those guys, not three of those guys. Because okay. before, before you know it, you got a bunch of haters running around there. And you'd be like, wow, why did they even sign that guy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, you you talk about Jimmy and how he would handle that situation. Now, he also, you know, admitted only after he was done coaching you know, he had a different set of rules yeah. for different players. Yes, and you did. know this too, right? And someone said, hey, John, was it John Roper that fell asleep in a meeting yeah. and, he, and he caught him? Uh, and, and so, but, and they said, well, what if Emmett would have fallen asleep in the meeting? I, I just would have gone over and wake, you know, gently nudged him to wake uh, him uh, up, you know, because that's him, right? And said, hey, man, Kay is a pillar. Don't get a crick yeah, in your yeah, neck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get your rest. Get your rest. Get your rest. <laughs> double deuce. Yeah. So, so I just wonder, um, can he uh did he sort of meet out that that uh sort of punishment if you will against a guy who had a bad attitude um equally see i don't want right? to did, did i don't want to knock mr hater because i don't know him personally uh i don't know what type of clubhouse guy he is with with his team he's with now how those guys feel but uh, all you got to do is do an investigation you know, go to the trainers. Yeah. Hey, what type of guy is this guy daily? And they're gonna be honest with you. You know, go to the yeah. to the players. Hey, what type of guy is this guy daily? And we just probably got a situation where this kid, like, I'm not gonna ruin my arm. I'm not gonna mess up nothing. Did we out of it? And and and, and that's fine. But make sure you got because when you have a, a clubhouse that loves one another, you, you every little chink hurts because out of 162 yeah. games. At that one crucial time, you may need this guy. And if he don't think things is right, and I'm not saying I don't know Mr. Hater, so I'm I'm not using him I'm saying hey, he player. Uh, you know, may you know, I remember Jimmy Cutter guy who was doing the training camp, and he said, Man, I don't care what happens, do not stop running. I don't care how many people tackle you, do not stop running. It's third and one. We need to win this game. I do not want you to stop. I looked at him and said, bro. Whatever happened, I don't care how many people hit you, do not stop running. Out of three guys hit him, guess what he did? He stopped. He stopped. Two days later, guess where he was? Okay. <laughs> because wow. Jimmy yeah. was trying to say, bro, I don't care what happened. And we weren't tackling him. To, they weren't tackling him to the ground. They were just hitting him. And I'm like, don't stop. And he looked at me. He took off running. And Jimmy looked at him like, just something simple as that. You know, and yeah. oh, Jimmy was cold blooded, man. Jimmy yeah. was cold blooded, yeah. and I'm not. I know Coach Bochi. Uh, he's probably not like that, but I, I'm quite sure he can make a hard decision. I'm quite sure he ain't scared no to say, "Hey, man, not today. You, you ain't my guy today. This is my guy today. You know, I love you. Get over there, and we'll pacify you today. But tomorrow, I need you to bulldog up. You know. So, yeah. but I don't want to yeah. knock Mr. Yeah. Hater because I do not know this cat personally. Yeah. I've always said that too, Nate, in our business, uh, especially the end I've been in all these years, like I will get an opportunity to form my own opinion right, right. on Josh Hader if, if he comes right. here. Right. So I'm not going to take I'm not going to take other people's word right. because to me, you know, that's like rumor and innuendo. Yes. Right. I, I'll make a judgment for myself if and when I have an opportunity to right. interview the man and mm -hmm. talk to him and, and, and get to know him a little bit. Yeah. And I will say this uh, with regard to your due diligence um, suggestion, there are so many people in the Padres organization who were uh, came from the Rangers organization. Right. That's going to be a real easy task right. for them. They're right. going to the Rangers and I'm sure they've already begun. Uh, they may already know what they think about yes. him, right? Because, you know, as, as there's there's all that that uh, talk between guys, especially front office guys. They're talking all the time. It, because, you know what, uh, I tell people, you know, and I'm glad, you know, the fans, uh, uh, at the end of the day, the fans are the one, ones that are getting walked on, hurt, uh, kids, you know, 
kids can't uh, enjoy their stars or their everyday work guys because, you know, guys, uh, you know, you 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 play 40 games as a AAU basketball guy. You play two and three games a day, you know, trying to get to the NBA to only have to play 82 games. And you telling me you tired? You telling me, you know, you, you don't want to be overloaded? But then the contract comes. And you, right. And, and you sign up for 82 games. If I'm a, and I'm a, I'm an ex player and I want every guy to get all this money, but LeBron James started that started two years ago, but how many years has he played before he started? When the Spurs started this, these guys were older than the Timmy Duncans of the world, yeah. the Tonys, but they were older, man. Now these young guys, I mean, come on, man. Come on, I I, I, I don't get it. And the ownership sooner or later, because the fans one day going to revolt like, man, I ain't, you know, I'll pay for a package, you know, but if this guy don't play, I want my money back. And the ownership going to get it, and the ownership going to go to, and see, this is what I don't understand about player associations. You are, you are for the player but you are for the player for the betterment of the game through the player. Not, mm-hmm. not to be set up and say, hey, man, sign this multi-million dollar, $30 million a year contract, and all we need from you is 60 games. You know, yeah. uh, all we need from you is 50 games. Because they are starting to load management even in the playoffs. Right. Okay, okay. We three, we we up three games. Hey, miss this game, and we'll come back the next game. Or you got a little no tweaked way, ankle, you know. We're only down by one. It's 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 two one. Hey, miss this game. I'll be like, to me, you know. I tell people, uh, I'm the first one to tell, bro. That's a hater, y'all. And the big Newton, hey, nah. I'm telling you as a fan. I'm telling you, uh, you know, as a person that have people that work in these different organizations, that's not fair to the fans. You know, and one day ownership going to have a meeting without he they going to go to the to the players union and say, "Look here y'all, either y'all fix it." And I think that's what uh the different commissioners doing right now. They probably saying to, yeah. to "Hey man, y'all fix this or we going to fix it." Because yeah. we we when we when we go back into negotiations, something got to be done. Either y'all start giving us some money back, or your players start playing again. You know, it, it's gonna happen, and it ain't too far off. Well, no. In fact, the NBA has implemented a few things, a few changes this year, which really discourage uh, teams and and penalize teams if there's a lot of that uh, load management yes. going on. The players, the players initially push back. I mean, they say, "Oh yeah, we're for that." We, you know, this we're, none of us are sitting out when we're not hurt. When we sit out, we need to sit out. You know, and I'm not sure that's true. Mm. Um, and I think the league is going to monitor it a little more closely right. to see if guys, you know, and again, some of these. Uh, Kawhi Leonard is a classic example. You know, James Harden has done it a bunch. Paul George has done it a bunch. These are guys who are superstars or potential superstars in the league, have been superstars in the league, and and they're sitting out games and I'm there to watch them, right? So the league is the league is stepping up your to your point, the NBA is already stepping up and putting some uh you know regulations in there right. that will uh prohibit the, this from happening. Now, will they be able to control it completely? No, because of what we heard from the players. Right. Hey, there are times when I gotta have that day right. off. And how do we regulate that how do we sort of measure their pain you know i don't think we can i think it's a good jumping off point though nate to the cowboys because i will say this there are a lot of takeaways from the game against the eagles i'll say this as one of them that jalen hurts is a cat that would not do any load management (laughs) i mean that guy i didn't think there was any way he was coming back first of all no way he's coming back in the first half 
And then I didn't know if he'd play the second half. That cat was back out there without missing a play, Nate. That's a tough dude. That's your that's the kind of guy you want, isn't it? I mean, a guy who will, you know, fight through that sort of pain and, and get after it. You know, uh we, we I think me and you spoke on this a while back. The dudes you saw at Alabama, the dudes you saw at Oklahoma, the way he was in high school is the same dudes you see right now in the pros. Hard nose. Yeah. I remember one game, uh, and I don't want to say it was for the Big Twelve, was, uh, for the Big Twelve championship or not, but it was an important game against Baylor, where he just almost ran the ball every down. He just took the ball, tucked it, and ran because that they was not covering him. They was they had everything else shot on Baylor. He just took the ball and ran it like out of about twenty times. He ran it about fourteen. And I'm saying to myself, this dude going to kill himself. But lo and behold, eight, nine years later, this this guy, and I, and I promise you, they probably had to tell him, do not run this ball. Do not yeah. run this ball unless you truly, truly have to. This kid is a difference maker, man. And, and, if, and I'm going to say this. The thing that they have done that I've always asked the Cowboys to do that I've always believed in and has never failed me because it, it, you just name any team that's winning on a consistent basis. I argue with everybody over there at the Cowboy Center. Everybody at yeah. the start arguing this one point. If you give me a good to great offensive line and you give me a good to great quarterback, I'm going to be in the race every year. I'm going to be in the race. And people do not understand that. They will never understand that. Hey, go out and get this great wide receiver. Go out and get this great. Let me tell you something. The Cincinnati Bengals is my proof. They, they, they have average offensive linemen. They got that great quarterback. I mean, he's taking a beating. And every year they start out slow. But he wins games. His offensive line get better and better as the year goes on. Now, you give me a defensive line to go along with that, now I'm in the playoffs every year, and I'm in the AFC and the NFC Championship every year because I have that quarterback, I have that offensive line, and I have that defensive line. I promise you, you can go find a wide receiver. I promise you, you can go find a a, a, a uh, running back. Now, cornerbacks may be a little bit more harder to find, but you can find safeties. Yeah. And I tell people, if you got an O-line, and it's going to give you the edge. And that is what's hurting the Cowboys, right? We're starting to crumble yeah. as an O-line. And uh, and, it, and it's showing up big time, my friend. It's showing up big time. And, and they, you know, Tyron Smith has been on the low management before. Was even he was back there with Tim Duncan on the low management. So I mean, this thing is ugly, man. Well, yeah, I mean, we saw big holes in that offensive line. To your point, Nate. So, um, but the big, maybe glaring one that everybody kind of noticed is that Aaron Steele just seemed really overmatched. Is he hurt? Uh, you know, what's going on there? He's coming back from a a may. He he blew. The ACL, the front of his knee, the side and the back. So he had major, major surgery. And I talked to him during the offseason. I said, son, make sure you're okay before you go back out. He said, Mr. Newton, I'm all right. He said, I'm good to go. I said, okay. And he's not okay. Uh, before this injury, he was a good pass blocker and a devastating run blocker. Now, uh, eight games in, he's just an – just an average pass blocker and an average run blocker. And that don't work in this league. You have to have one of those things that's dominating that, you you know, you can cover for yourself. And, uh, and it didn't help because Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter sitting in the middle of the Fletcher Cox and our center and guards were getting driven back a few times. And just so happened those few times at the same time this boy had an inside-outside goal on uh, Hassan Reddick, and he took advantage of uh, of this kid. And uh, I'm just so shocked the Cowboys didn't give him more help. We keep going yeah. down this road of the same old thing, whereas a guy struggling tremendously, 
and we don't seem to give him help. And uh, he needed help 60 to 70 percent of the time because every time we needed a big play in the open field, especially towards the end of the game, it seemed like we were offsides, giving up a sack, giving up a pressure. Uh, you know, that kept us in the game, really. Just to be honest with you, you know, that yeah. kept us in this game. And I told you two or three weeks ago, Rad, as long as Dak uh, can play instinctively and move around in that pocket and go get us a two or three first downs a game, and like I said, I'm not asking him to run no 100, 200 yards, but mm-hmm. I'm asking him if it's three yards to get a first down to keep the drive alive, go get that and slide down. Uh, go uh, give yourself a chance on fourth and one. You know, to make a play if it ain't but three or four yards, we'll be down, and you, you know, in the situation. So, Dak played well, but our offensive line, man, you, well, they probably about a C. They played like a C. They gave up five yeah. sacks, yeah. ungodly amount of pressures. Uh, Tyron Smith, believe it or not, played pretty well. Uh, the left guard played okay. The right guard played okay. But our center and our right uh, tackle struggled tremendously, you know, so – I'm thanking God that uh, our center was in the middle of this deal so our guards can periodically give him a hand and give him some help. But, yeah, the thing that bothers me the most, and I'll continue to tell people this is, uh, you you, you can, you know, like, you know, and this is what is going to get us if we're not careful. If we don't go out in free agency next year and sign the A1 offensive lineman, uh, if we don't be able to draft uh, one of these young guys, Austin Richards or uh, T.J. Bass, don't develop into a starter, I mean, uh, above average to good offensive lineman, not, then everybody going to all of a sudden be, what happened? What happened? Oh, my God. We need offensive lineman. We need offensive lineman. Well, you shouldn't have never. If you already have your quarterback, if you say you already have your quarterback, you should never be in this position as as a, as a, as an offensive line. You should never. I, and and I tell, you, it cost Mahomes them a Super Bowl. It cost them a Super Bowl. Mahomes didn't have to say nothing after the game was over. Andy Reid was in the GM office the next day saying, "Hey, man." Get my boss some get my boss some offensive linemen. You see the Cincinnati Bengals selling their life to get them mm-hmm. some some offensive linemen. And and I, you know, and you know, and I and like I tell people, you can do all the talk shows you want. You can tell me uh this wide receiver the next LeBron James, but if your quarterback on his back, he ain't going nowhere. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, and Tony Pollard, what's wrong with Tony Pollard? What's wrong with your offensive line? <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, something wrong with Tony Pollard. I right? know oh, something wrong with your offensive line. And so, when you don't have that ability to protect your quarterback, or you don't have that ability to get that first down, uh, you know, why we ain't running on the goal line? Why short yardage ain't no good? I don't know. I ain't saying your offensive line ain't no good, but they ain't playing with no continuity. Uh, you each guy, you can't have. Uh, offensive line, I don't care how great the talent is, but if there's no continuity and they can't move as a wall or they can't block as an umbrella, you know, you open up an umbrella, you got the point, and then you got a thing that comes around. It circles around to keep the rain off of you. That's how a quarterback like to see a pocket. When the umbrella opens, it circles mm-hmm. around him. And you don't want nothing coming down on top of him. All that just goes to the outside. And that's just how you're trying to do with offensive line. But when that when you poke some holes in it, after a while, that umbrella ain't no good. You're going to get irritated and you're yeah. going to get mad. You know what I'm saying? Because you have messed up as a female and, you, yeah. you, and your clothes look ugly as a male. So you eventually going to get rid of that umbrella. You know what I'm saying? Or hey. you're going to be a mess when you go to the job. Right. I, yes, there, was a couple, there was a couple times last week, Nate, where it looked like the wind blew that umbrella the wrong way, man. <laughs> it's like, how oh, do you like it? <laughs> It was a fire hey, sale, I, I, you know. You know, and I, I tell people it, and and so I, you know, people get mad at me, Rad, because I, I ask this question. Well, the Eagles got. Let me let me give it to you. The Eagles now they have a bye week. Okay, they're in a bye week this coming week, but after right. that, 
They're at Kansas City. They're at they home against Buffalo. They home against San Francisco. Oh my God. And then we got Dallas again. Now you go over here and Dallas don't have it so hard. They got the Giants. They got the Panthers. They got Washington. You yeah. know, and they had a tough game don't come into the Seahawks, or excuse me, and to Phil you know, to, to Philadelphia after the uh after the uh Washington game. No, no, after the Panthers game, they got Philadelphia. Yeah. Let me tell you something, man. Let me say something. Let me tell you something right oh, now. Please do. John please do. Radigan. Please. The good teams in this league will have one or two wins where they've beaten teams of equal or better talent in coaching. Philadelphia has a win over Miami, who is a playoff team. Tell me who does the Dallas Cowboys have a win over this year that really sticks out and means something. Just I, I'm waiting. Yeah. Hurry yeah. up, Rad. Yeah. To tell really me. Yeah. So my issue, and I keep trying to express this to everybody. Oh, we wasn't ready for the 49ers. Oh, that was so heartbreaking. Oh, we're so close to the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, now we are ready. No matter how you want to put it, how you want to do it, you lost. Yep. And until and until until you kick that dough down, that's what Jimmy kept pressing on us every week when we when we started to turn it over he said fellas we got to have that win we got to win somehow some way so i want y'all to feel the feel that 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 feeling of beating a good team okay we supposed to beat detroit we supposed to beat uh uh the new orleans saints we suppose can we beat the new york giants Super Bowl winners? Can we beat the Washington Commanders, Super Bowl winners? Can we beat a Philadelphia team that's given up only 12 points a game? When we beat these teams and do it on a consistent basis, now when we get to the playoffs, road or at home, we know we can win. See, people keep saying about they should, they should feel they can win. How do you feel you can win when you're always losing, it's always, can we win this game? But guess what? All you need is this much doubt. This much doubt will, will get you off sides. This much doubt will give you illegal formations. This much doubt will make you not aware of where you're at on the field. This much doubt will uh, uh, get a punt call back. But when you know you can win, when you know you can win, Ain't no doubt in the world can step to you because you everything in your heart, you know, they're going to make a bad play. We going to make the play to win. They're going to make the play to lose. But until you knock that door in, until you kick that door in, until you win that game, we just an average team. We just we are at sitting at number six. And I told people, I said, it's amazing. And I tried to tell people this a couple of weeks ago. We're sitting at number six. If the playoffs start today, we sitting at number six. Guess what we got? Guess what we got to go play? The San Francisco. The, 49ers, the yeah. San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm saying to myself, yeah. until you kick that door in, and, you know, we can't, you know, you look at these games, we can't lose not another NFC game. We lost to the Cardinals. Are, are, are they the NFC? We lost to Philadelphia. Aren't they the NFC? We can't lose another NFC game because now, you know, because we got the Seahawks. We got Washington. We got the Panthers. We can't lose another NFC game. Well, you know, because I don't bank on another team losing. Everybody banking right. on Philadelphia. Right. Oh, but you got to understand now, Philadelphia is 8-1. and one. We're 5-3. and three. Their bye week is this week, so we catch up at, 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 in games. 
Okay, we have to beat New York. We have to beat the Panthers. We have to beat Washington. You and, and I don't and I don't go with the must win deal, but you can't lose. You got to play like Philadelphia is not going to lose a game. That's how you have to play. Like Philadelphia is not going to lose. Not like Philadelphia. Oh, this is tough in Philadelphia. They got KC after this week. Oh, they got Buffalo. Come on, man. You can't play their schedule for them. You can wish and hope as a fan, but as a player, you got to play your schedule. So, I mean, I ain't got much to say. I mean, we got New York, and it's not about New York. They don't have a quarterback. They don't even know if Danny De- – I think they got a good dude named Danny DeVito. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> they got a dude named Tommy DeVito. I'm just messing around. You know, all they got is Barkley, bro. All they got on offense is Barkley. Yeah, yeah. All they got on defense is – uh. Kayvon Thibodeau, Tip Thibodeau. That's all they got. Mm-hmm. Don't, 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 don't even play with these folks, man. Don't, don't even pull a Oklahoma and go out there with the last bedlam and let Oklahoma State beat you. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> that, that blew me away, man. Oklahoma let, let Oklahoma State beat them in the last bedlam, you know, for, for this short period of time until they get it back together, you know, after they yeah, get in the yeah. SEC. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. So one last thing about this um, this effort, right? This game after the San Francisco game, you know, you were um, you were not happy with some of the reaction. Micah Parsons saying, "Oh man, we're this close to him, man. We're this close to him." Now he was kind of, you know, consistent with that message after the Philadelphia game. I must admit, when I when I saw those comments from Micah this time, I thought, you know what, they are close. You know, to the Eagles. I mean, they're two, you know, overturned touchdown scores. One was a two point conversion, one was a touchdown. Two overturned scores, you know, from likely winning this game. Um, are, are you buying that a little bit more this time, or is that something you don't want to hear until you're better than that? The thing is, in today's society, you can say what you want, the film will tell you the truth. And like I tell people, don't tell me you watched all 22 and you pick out something you didn't like or something you did like. I, OK, I understand you got the ability to get to all 22, but uh, they played better. Our defense played nice. Our it quarterback did. played nice. Very nice. Uh, and the only two things, like I tell people, I'll question that mark in the first when I thought coach should have challenged it, but people thought it was too early. But I, I, I thought he should have challenged it. He didn't. That's fine. But one thing that bothered me is you had a touchdown and all Chuma had to do was go tell the guy I'm checking in. That's all. I, don't tell me he checked in. Don't tell me he didn't. If he would have got that ref by the arm and said, hey, man, I'm 71. I'm checking in. OK, I, 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 I've been down with that. But you didn't do that. So that cost us a score. Yeah, that. Be, he has to be aware. That that's what I'm telling you. That little bit of doubt, mm. you know, you're aware. See, Mike Irvin never fumbled in a key situation. Emmett never fumbled in a key situation because you are aware of what's around you and what is happening. That, so that, those are the two things that bo- those are the three things that bother me the most out of this whole game. And they didn't get his kid no help at the right tackle, from my point of view. Those yeah. are the two, three things that bothered me this game. Check in if you're supposed to do it so we yeah. can keep that touchdown. Dak, be aware where your feet at so we can keep that two points. Now you win. But you didn't win. You didn't kick the door down. So I don't live on fantasy. I don't do fantasy football. I got no points whether you score or don't score. I get no points. All I get is a broken heart. That's all I get, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I hate I hate that you, your big old heart's broken this week, Nate. But yeah. I look, like you say, this week, this week, everybody will be feeling better again. Again, you know, hopefully they come out and take care of business against the Giants, and then um, you know we'll do it again next week. But man, we thank Niagara Plumbing for yes. putting this together for us, and and uh, we really enjoy the opportunity to tell you something, don't we? That's Nate? right. That's right. We'll be back again next week. Maybe with a little bit of uh, Mavericks, a little bit of Thunder, and a whole lot of Cowboys. And we'll start talking more 
about just life in itself, man. So, y'all, hey, I love you, Rad. I love y'all guys. I love the fans. I love y'all for checking in. And thank you, Niagara Plumbing. Thank you